it may look to some people that it feels as if this is a different artist, but I think in the new work and in memory, the the concerns are the same. I think it adds to my my contribution to the conversation there. Notions of spirituality and manifestation of things that are invisible and public space and architecture and the difference between the individual and the group and uh, permanence versus temporary. I think of the text works as being having the same uh, creative journey as as any other works that I make that are much more sculptural and material based. That very often there's a ready-made versus a start. Now the ready-made could be the location or it could be, as on this occasion, a piece of existent text. The text uh, sort of takes its origin from George Bernard Shaw. Now, previous works could take the text from a popular song or a half a conversation that I hear in a pub or the last line of a book. I don't feel there's any hierarchy or rule to where the ready-made comes from, other than I'm not the author. Perhaps you don't know the origin, but you can... You know nothing else other than the fact that it's from somewhere. And I think that interests me still, but has created a bit of difficulty because I don't, I, there's not a magic book that I refer to for the next, for the next phrase. And there's lots that are in the books in my notebook that don't ever see the light of day. I think the strength of this phrase is that uh, you imagine what you desire, you think you know what that means, and you're just understanding it, and then it falls through your fingers. And I think, for me, it may mean one thing, but for you, I'm sure it will mean something else. But for me, the, the, the interesting bit is that you're imagining. I mean, it's, that's a really old, essential kind of discussion about sculpture and art, but I think it's still extremely relevant and extremely interesting. The phrase is made manifest, not in, in neon. For me, neon is very closely associated with advertising and it also has a long documented history of being used by many contemporary artists. So the language of the of the phrase is more using an aesthetic of the of the fairground, of the circus, which is a little bit more theatrical and arguably is a little bit seedy and this proclamation is being presented to us. You know, the language of scaffolding is a temporary structure which we're familiar with in the in the urban street. And it feels like these words are being presented to you for a period of time. It's here this weekend, but maybe it's moving on to another village next weekend. No one should be mistaken by thinking that these are anything other than sculptures and that the context and the image that the, that the text creates within the landscape or the cityscape is the work. The proximity of the work in the gallery, I think, for me is kind of interesting because I think the proposition with the text is that it's very public. It's addressing you as part of a wider group and a bigger group of people. And I'm interested to see how its first manifestation in the gallery, which is much more private than it would be if you were out in the landscape, affects not the work, but the, the audience, to see how they read it. I'm very conscious of this new work sitting alongside the, the, the existing graveyard piece. I'm conscious that I feel that the graveyard's been very successful on a number of levels, and I don't want to either change the meaning of that work or replicate it 
or a comment on it. But of course, it's inevitable that this second work within the context of Jupiter is going to be dealt with alongside uh, the other. So for me, that's both uh, exciting and also terrifying at the same time. On this occasion, what we're doing is we're presenting the text in the gallery first. The gallery context is the precursor for something which is yet to come. Locate it as if it's addressing the house. Well, this is the first one we've ever made that's going to be slightly curved, which I think is a little, just nicely generous to the audience. It becomes more three-dimensional than two-dimensional. And I guess that's because the landscape here is quite uh, soft on its edges. The outlook with the house and with the access road just seemed to be the right thing to do. I hope. <laughs> perhaps it's more for the family and perhaps it's part of the, the discussion that's going on privately rather than uh, publicly. It becomes an illustration and a reflection of the the owner and only time will tell whether or not it becomes a stone around their neck or whether it becomes a flag to fly on happy days and I think it's brave and interesting for them to to have gone with those those words in that order.